Wickedness is the word the PDP uses to describe the increase of the petrol pump price. And NULTW members who barricaded the Undo State Assembly complex have been said to be praying. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeindi. Welcome, and this is Plots Politics. In reaction to the increase of the pump price of petrol, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari is pushing Nigerians to the wall using the words arrogant display of insensitivity and total disregard to the demands by the citizens, end of quote. The party called for an immediate downward review of the recently increased pump price. The party says that prior to Buhari's emergence as president, he had declared the fuel subsidy as a fraud. Joining us to discuss this is Ikenga Ugochinyere, a spokesperson of Coalition of United Political Parties, UMPP. Good evening, Mr. Ikenga. Evening. Yeah, good to have you. And joining us in this conversation is Nelson Okujumi, a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Okujumi. Yeah, Nelson Thank Okujumi. you, uh, Kadi, for having me. It's a pleasure. Good. Good to have you. Yeah, let me quickly start with uh, Ikenga. Uh, Ikenga, you, you read that statement, and I want to believe that you've also seen it before now. What's your take about the PDP position using all those words to describe the issue of fuel subsidy? I must say clearly that what the PDP uh, said is in tandem with what the opposition coalition have said already. But uh, we didn't expect PDP to just issue a warning to the president. Time has come for PDP as a big opposition party, a member of the opposition coalition, to understand that the time for issuing, we have issued over 1,000 warnings and a lot of issues. The president doesn't care because he thinks that he owes the Nigerian people no accountability. What the PDP is supposed to do is to key into the ongoing mobilization for nationwide uh, civil uh, protest to protest all the oppressive policies, the issue of increment in the poor price, the issue of uh, the electricity tariff, the issue of the VAT, and so on and so forth and the issue of the daily stealing, uh, direct stealing from our common treasury. As I speak to you today, the wage bill, the debt profile of the government is almost nearing 100 trillion, and I feel borrowing. And the money that have been recovered are also missing. With all this recovered money, all this borrowed money, all this increment in fuel price, all this increment in electricity tariff, all this increment in VAT, I want to ask you. As President Buhari performed wonders, is Nigeria now littering, uh, littered with the skyscrapers? So with so much money in the hand of the government, poverty is the king under Buhari's regime. So the PDP statement is in order, but one more action okay. now. We are tired uh, of our statements. We'll, we'll come back to the issue of action. Let me quickly bring in Nelson into this conversation. Nelson... Can you just please explain, part of the statement released from PDP reminded Nigerians that uh, the price of fuel has moved from 87 Naira to 160. That's almost 100% increase. What do you have to say? Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we, it is very, very unfortunate that uh, Mr. Gochini is putting PDP on the other platform that he calls the uh, COP. And uh, if we want to be sincere to ourselves, I think we need to ask him how much the PDP in how much the PDP in uh, because of uh, petroleum products when the party came into office in 1999. But that is by the wayside. The total matters that put the government in place today. I think when the when the government came into office, based on the promise of Mr. President, that he had described the first subsidy regime as a scam. And you recall that even though that the PDP of a former president of Donata, the Nigerian people took to the streets in 2012, not because that the Nigerian people didn't know that first of city was a scam, but because they knew that the government okay. that there was hand in gloves with the, the looters. And that is why the Nigerian people today, 
even though the government has increased, the pump price of oil has been increased due to the uh, the food regulation of the oil of the downstream. Okay, the now saying, now saying, um, the network is pretty bad. You may do us a favor if you can hear me. Probably to log out and re-logging whether the network will be pretty better. Um, we're losing audio. I'm really straining my ears to hear what you're saying, but I got a piece of it. But we'll allow you to make your statement clearer by the time you um, you come back to that network. But Ikenga, what Nelson is saying is that if anybody will criticize, if anybody will say this government hasn't done well, it shouldn't come from the opposition. And according to him, he did say, if I remember what he, one of the things he said, is that it was the protest was about looters and not really the price of the petrol. That it feels, I mean, the, the, the subsidy regime then was a way of uh, siphoning the na nation's resources. What's your reaction to that? You see, I, I don't like reacting to people who in their mind know the truth. I wish you don't replay the tape of the protest now. I see what was the comment by everybody. So he's just lying, and I hate people coming on TV to lie. Play the tape and see what Bakare said. Play the tape and see what Falana said about the increment. Even where uh, Falana then said that uh, even when the money is removed, it will be squandered. I watched part of the tape even today. So just Google it now, you will see the tape. It's about full increment, 100%. And government reversed, and the process was called off. But that is not even the issue. We are not interested in whether they, why they protested or why they don't. The point is that government has been inflicting so much harm and suffering on the people in the last six years. And I ask you that all the money that have been realized, which amount of money, running into children, I want to show, I want you to tell you the impact of this money, the impact of the three trillions that have been borrowed, the impact of the revenue that have been saved from the removal of subsidy, the impact of the revenue on electricity. We are still paying subsidy to electricity distributors and their producers and all sorts of things. So at the end of the day, government is running on high wealth, high wealth. So even though you remove the price of wealth or you don't remove the price of wealth, the point is that there's no accountability, there's a lot of wastage and so on and so forth. Okay, where is the VAT that, 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 that is realizing trillions of naira? Where is the money in terms of uh, development? Go from our highway. I just came back from uh, Edo. I took that road from Edo through Okene up to Abuja. Look at, look, look at the kind of mess on those roads. So if we cannot build in the last six years from Abuja through Lokoja, Okene, Edo to Asaba, what roads have you been building? If you can't build from Lagos up to Asaba, if you can't build from here to, 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 to Jos, what have you been building? Look at, it, look at the Kaduna, Abuja to Kaduna Express Road. It mess. All the express highways surrounding Abuja, the seat of power, is the bank. And you have increased revenue, you have increased uh, uh, taxes, you have removed subsidies. With all this suffering and all these trillions you have realized, they have all been wasted. Ikenga. That is why. Ikenga. That is why. Listen, whether they remove subsidies. I am with you. I am subsidies. with you. But let me yes. let me just let me interject you so that we stay on the same lane. Now, part of the things you did say is I'm a bit worried why we've not had a kind of uproar that you are calling for. Uh, is it that uh, this government seems to be a bit um, transparent? Why are people not hitting the street like we had in 2012? That is what we're saying. We're saying, we're saying the same thing. What the government has done in the last four years is to try to suppress the right of the people, is to try to suppress the power of our public protest, it intimidates people and divides us along ethnic and religious lines. And I tell you, everybody is complaining, go on the street, as the women, the market women are in pain. But the issue is that the group that is supposed to have coordinated have also been compromised. I want to tell you boldly, 80% of the professional organizations in Nigeria, especially the ones in respect, have been corrupted and bribed. They are on government payroll. And I don't want to mention their name. You know them. That is why they cannot call the people to action because they have been compromised. Okay. And that is the Ikenga. painful part of it. Ikenga, um, quite a lot of allegations you're making. I, I wish, uh, thank God we have Nelson back. Nelson, uh, Ikenga has reeled out a whole lot of issues. Part of the things he said is that people have been <laughs> suppressed. People have been, you know, intimidated from reacting. 
And he also mentioned that, can we leave the past where it belongs and look at what this government is saying rather than staying on what PDP did and what PDP did not do? What do you think about what government is doing? You, you see, the difference between this administration and the administration of uh, Ikenga's party, the PDP, was that be in, during their tenure, there was this deficit of trust between the people and the government. You recollect that in 2011, when the government of President, former President Goodluck Jonathan mooted the idea, we engaged him in an intellectual discussion over the issue. We brought out the facts. But the government said, no, forget the facts. Let us go on with the business of uh, subsidizing fuel fraudulently to uh, cronies. And also, you recognize that even the former Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, also made a statement during the book launch of uh, uh, Bolaji Abdullahi, where he said, he, as a member of the PDP then, he approached President Gulag Jonathan and pointed out this anomaly to him. And President Gulag is in the paper. President Gulag said, oh, the oil business, the oil industry is very oily. The truth of the matter is that the people are not taken to the street today because the people want to understand this new fuel regime. Like we, the government has said that there is full deregulation, that the government does not have the money to pay for, for, for fuel subsidy. And that is why the government has allowed the market forces to determine. The people are not happy about it, but the people want to understand and see the benefit that they could get in the long run. It's not that the people are not angry, but people are angry. But people understand that, unlike in the past, that this administration is not a rapacious gang like they had. That is an administration that, you know, even with the little Nelson, resources that we are Nelson, getting, that the uh, government has Nelson, been able to let me, do it. Let me come you in here. Like that during the regime Nelson, of former please. President Bilo Jonathan, you please listen? the government, made, the, the cause of... Uh, Nelson, if you can hear me, please listen. I, I want us to stay on this before I go back to Ikenga. Now, you mentioned that uh, the people are waiting to understand what is going on. And I'm asking... This issue of subsidy for up to each time, this government says it is not budgeted for, it is not in the appropriation. So what has been happening over the years? Don't you think this is lack of transparency, so to say, according to some quarters? The first subsidy regime since 2015, has not been, there has not been provision for self-subsidy in the national budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. It is called under recovery, under the NPC. NMPC had, has had to bear the cost of subsidizing the cost of fuel in, in its in business operations. But the government has now realized that the, the, the lack of funds to prosecute the subsidy regime, you know, could, cripple, could uh, ensure the crippling of the Nigerian economy. And that is why they have said, we have to take hands of it. You recognize that if the government continues to subsidize the cost of fuel, states, the, uh, uh, the Nigerian states, depends on the allocation from, fuel, from uh, the sale of crude oil. And these uh, states, as we speak, over 20 states are owing workers' salary. A lot of businesses are, are crippled because government cannot meet up its obligations to local contractors. So what the government is trying to do with the new regime is that the government is saying, look, instead of us continue to subsidize it through the NMPC, or like what our, uh, our predecessors, did in 20, between 20, between 1999 and 2015, is that we want the market prices to determine so that the revenue, the resources can be judiciously used, you know, provide infrastructure to better the lives of the people. Hmm. And that okay. is what is happening now. Okay. Unlike then, when the, unlike okay. during the regime of President Gulag Jonathan, when he came into I, office, for I, the, about four years while he was in power. Let me see whether... Kudal, uh, the international market thank you, over thank you Nelson. I think your point is clear. Uh, let me listen to Ikenga. Uh, is this convincing, the explanation he has given to you or to us? I'm listening. Yeah, are you convinced with this explanation he has given that it is about allowing the forces in the market to determine the price? This, we are used to this argument. The point is, the point is that... Uh, 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 because the uh, people are suffering and complaining and refuse to rally on the street, he has described it as an achievement that Buhari has performed very well. I, I, I hope that you that is in your studio and Nigeria so are listening will clap for him for telling them what they don't know, that Buhari is the best leader Nigeria has ever produced. There are certain things that, you know, in trying to defend the government, you shouldn't allow yourself to lose the day club. All that he said has made no point. He's just promoting a regime that has failed. And at the end of the day, there is nothing, if you like, subjected to market forces. If you like, 
subject it to the forces of government. The point is that the corruption that is deputed in it, the government that you have today does not have the capacity to ensure a competitiveness in the oil and gas sector. Have you forgotten one of the big promises of President Mohamed Buhari is that he's going to open up, he's going to open up on the oil sector. I ask you today, is the Nigerian oil sector open? Is the secrecy act? So these are people who just open their mouth because God gave them mouth. They will say anything that mouth can say, but check it with their action. It's zero. So like father, like son, just like Buhari can say anything, and then those words doesn't mean anything. That's the same way he's talking. Because everything that I've said, even on subsidy, even on this market forces issue controlling this thing, they have all said all this is they didn't do anything. You know, the all that Jonathan did that they complained about, and they said they were gonna provide solutions, even on security. Look at the way they threw our country into insecurity. If you like, give them the whole money, let Nigeria pay 500 naira for a liter of fuel. These people can still not move the country forward. So it's not about uh, removing society. It's about it is another invitation for waste and corruption. And I feel that there is the, the, the timing of the of the remover and the increment in the price is not good. It's not good because right now, having increased wages, the people that used to use 100 naira to, 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 to take a transport from Malaba to Abuja, with this increment, they're going to be paying 150, okay. 200. Have their wage increased? People just think as if they are coming from Congo. Okay, thank, thank think you. about the people. Ikenga. I say this because I go on the street with these people. Ikenga, I, I, I think I got your view. point clearly. I got your point clearly. And I want to quickly ask Nelson this. Nelson, probably I know this is not what he meant, but this is my own take. Probably the problem is the timing. This is a time where a lot of people have lost their jobs. This is a time the pandemic has not been fair for a lot of people. Should it be the time the government should increase the burden on them by withdrawing what they've been doing before? Uh, uh, Kyle, it's unfortunate that uh, Ikenga has turned this uh, issue about this uh, topic that we are discussing, has turned into a personal attack. He's talking about President Buhari reforming the oil sector. Will he do it by, by fiat or by legislation? For the president to, uh, to reform any sector of the Nigerian economy, don't forget to go in case you don't know. We, are, we operate a democracy whereby there's the executive and there's the legislative arm of government. The legislators have to make their own inputs. And any, any uh, sustaining policy must have legislative backing. President Mohamed Bari cannot sit down in his office and make a reform in any sector of the Nigerian economy. The constitution does not allow him to that power. He's not a, he's not a dictator. He's, he's, the country is governed by law. So the president has to have the input from the, legisl from the legislature. He can have the authority of law, if he wants to make any reform. Leaving that be, uh, aside, you are talking about the timing, and I, I, that is the question I want to ask. Every now and then, people say, we are not right, we are not right, we are not right for this, this is not the, please, when is the right time? This was the same policy former President Gulag Jonathan attempted to venture into, but because the Nigerian people lack the trust in him, and that is why today, even though there's discordant tools out there in the public domain, those who are even angry, I, I, they want to be educated so that they don't look foolish at the long, in the long run. Because people, people realize that the economic situation is bad. Nelson, but even the government Nelson, has a responsibility Nelson, to the citizens. Nelson, since you have decided to actually, uh, let me use the word, if, you, if, you, if I'm allowed, to actually defend President Buhari, what do you have to say when President Buhari alluded to this under Jonathan, that subsidy is a fraud or was a fraud. So what has been happening? Call it any name, whether NNPC has been paying the money, but don't you think, if at all, it deserves to apologize for calling this regime a fraud? No, uh, Kayode, under the previous administrations, they were paying subsidy to cronies. They were paying it to ghost, ghost importers. You recognize even the House of Representative inquiry indicted people that are standing oh. on trial in court today for first subsidy fraud. That is a fact of history. And what is but under now? the NNPC, the loss is being borne by the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation. So NNPC is not paying the subsidy uh, money to anybody. NNPC is there, when NNPC takes crude oil of $10 aside and they make $15, and because they have to import petroleum products, at $20, at $20 uh, the five 
five dollar difference of a loss is what an NPC is bearing. Okay. In the course of its operation, and in the last five years under President Muhammad Dubari, NPC has not paid a dime to any uh, importer of oil because NPC is the sole importer okay. of oil. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Past, uh, it's okay. Had, Oh, uh, Nelson, let me quickly go back to Kenga. Now, he explained that the difference in that regime to Dan is the fact that this subsidy were allegedly being paid to some few people. And I remember that quite a lot of people were taken to court. Kenga, they have explained, or the government has explained, which it seems is echoing now, that this money were not being taken by some portfolio investors. It is on that worry that... Uh... It is under Buhari that told us that he was not paying subsidy that ended up when I saw a wage bill of over two five six billion being paid monthly as subsidy. And Nigerians never felt the impact. And let me tell you this the corruption has been in the oil and gas, even while we supported the removal of Jonathan. And that was one of the things that endangered us, you know, the endangered us to Buhari, that he said he was gonna unmask the mafia in the oil sector. He was even going to uh, departmentalize them and so on and so forth. But he came up and continued enjoying the whole thing. The oil money is sweet. That is why he held on the Minister of Petroleum and continued to be in charge of uh, who takes the final decision. But at the end of the day, he was unable to turn the oil and gas sector around. He continued to pay the subsidy. But the fact that they continued to pay the same subsidy that said that was not existing, that it was a fraud. Now, when they came in, they thought that it was not really a fraud, that there was actually payments being made. And they continue. So if he's saying that they were paying cronies and ghosts, it means that we really continue paying those cronies and ghosts. And that is why he has woken up from sleep. And he wants to stop it six years after. Six years after he was paying cronies and wasting our resources. So let's leave this argument. Because each time you want to talk about Buhari and his ineffectiveness, they run to the issue of corruption as a, as a cover. But at the end of the day, has they removed corruption? Have they not institutionalized corruption? So let's leave lift us a uh, roadside argument the government likes to make. To okay. say, you are very much aware, not that I'm deviated, but under them, they will sack leadership of NDDC, appoint people to probe them, and those people will go and steal the money. And when they are asked to account, they will faint. So let's leave those issues. The point is that they like the capacity, and that is the point. And that is why we said the president in the last six years have not done anything to warrant him, you know, to continue to inflict this harm on the Nigerian people. He should stop the West. Let him increase the wages. Let him account where all this money is recovering from removal of subsidy, the okay. one on electricity tariff, the one on VAT, the one on uh, the, uh, uh, corruption returns from U.S. and uh, Switzerland, and the one from uh, Chinese borrowing. Where is the impact? Okay, thank oh, you please. so much, uh, Ikenga. I, 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 let me quickly have a final take from uh, Nelson. Nelson, I think he has raised some critical issue. Where, how do we survive? How do we pay this money when our revenue has dropped as individuals and as families? Well, the, I think we must make one state, uh, one point very clear, that, like uh, Ugo Chinyere said that uh, he, he has made this allegation that President Muhammad Buhari has been paying cronies like uh, uh, his predecessors did. And I want us to go and look at the national budget in the last five years, or like what obtained before President Muhammad Buhari came into office, where the federal administration uh, at the federal level were making, were making budgets for subsidy provisions in the national budget. In the last five years, that has not happened. Going forward is that the government has to look at, it, at ways to mitigate the hardship in the country that, you know, uh, it inherited and which uh, it has continued to battle. He talked about challenges in the security industry. Uh, I, I'm sure Hugo Chinyere is not unaware of the Dazuki Gates, where is the administration of his party, you know, uh, turned the, the security funds to fight uh, Boko Haram into a bazaar. And that is the, 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 the mess uh, the President okay. Muhammad Bari administration is still trying to clear five years after. If the PDP had done the needful, I don't think the President Muhammad Buhari administration will have inherited all this Thank mess. Thank you so much, and, you know, Nelson. We'll see where we are. Thank but you so much, Nelson. I'm, I'm so sorry our time is fast spent, and I got a call that I have to end this segment. Thank you once again, Nelson Okujimi, our political analyst, and also big thanks to Ikenga Ugochinyere, the spokesperson of Coalition of United Political Parties, for your intervention. Let the conversation continuing on all our social media platforms. Thank you once again. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you so much, sir.
Okay, and to our viewers, please, we want you to stay with us. We will take a short break, and when we return, the NULTW members will clock the Ondo State Assembly complex were said to have been praying. True or false? You will find out after the break. The emergency press conference was called by the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva, and the Minister of Power, Sally Maman. It was supposed to clear the air on the recent increase in pump price of petroleum and increase in electricity tariff. The ministers all admitted that Nigeria's situation had become dire. It was the decision by government. If you have a situation, even privately, where you have lost 60% of your income, due to no fault of yours, strictly speaking, because in the whole world, nobody prepared for COVID-19. COVID-19 happened on us and immediately eroded demand for our product, our most important product, which is crude oil. Demand for crude oil completely dropped because most countries, all countries in the world, were on lockdown at the same time. I mean, that is very easy for all of us to understand. The truth of the matter is that subsidizing fuel is no longer feasible especially under the prevailing economic conditions in the country. The government simply can no longer afford for a subsidy. As revenues and foreign exchange earnings are falling by almost 60% due to the downturn in the fortunes of the oil sector. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says he returned to the subsidy regime which has gulped almost 1.5 trillion naira in the last three years, will be disastrous for the nation. Federal government is not unmindful of the pains associated with higher fuel prices at this time. That is why we will continue to seek ways to cushion the pains, especially for the most vulnerable Nigerians. With 60% less revenues today, we cannot afford the cost. The second danger is the potential return of fuel queues, which has thankfully become a thing of the past under this administration. The days in which Nigerians queue for hours and days just to buy petrol, often at very high prices, are gone for good. Of course, there is also no provision for first subsidy in the revised 2020 budget. The Minister of Information also cleared the air on estimated billing by electricity distribution companies and tariff increase by the federal government, saying not all Nigerians will be affected. Only customers with guaranteed the minimum of 12 hours of electricity per day can have their tariff adjusted. Those who get less than 12 hours supply will experience no increase. This is the largest group of customers. NARC will also strictly enforce the capping regulation to ensure that unmetered customers are not charged beyond the metered customers in the neighborhood. In other words, there will be no more estimated billings. Amadine Uyi, Plus TV Africa.